Because I lived in the West Village at that time, the, the music scene was really good. I was around the, the music business when I was a kid. And uh, quite often I'd be standing next to Thelonious Monk or Stan Getz, sometimes not knowing who they were. But I had an opportunity to rent a space right on me. It was right in the heart of the, the whole village scene. And I turned it into a coffee house with live entertainment. And uh, we charge admission and I'd pay the musicians. And I was a businessman. At, at about I think I was like 19 or something. And because I knew everyone, they wanted to work at my club. I had John, John Sebastian there, um, who later formed The Love and Spoonful. Felix Papalotti, who was later the producer for Cream. Yeah. Jim McGuinn, he founded The Birds. He changed his name to Roger McGuinn. He, he worked for me for many months. On occasion, I need to have pictures taken in my club so I could give the pictures to the Village Voice and critics and stuff. And I'd have to hire photographers. And they were a pain in the ass and they were terrible. And it was slow with the pictures because I needed pictures on a deadline. And uh, then I became a road manager for Love and Spoonful. Always brought a camera with me and we traveled the country. And I started getting pictures of uh, Bob Dylan's father at some gig he came to see, see the Love and Spoonful. And one night I went to see uh, Johnny Cash at uh, uh, Carnegie Hall. But I kept all that stuff in the can because I was too busy being a road manager and I never actually processed the film. And I had a photo show here in town a couple of years ago and some kid came up to me and he said, uh, you have any pictures of Johnny Cash? And I was about to tell him no, because it wasn't part of my career. You know, my career started at another point. And, uh, and I thought, yeah, maybe I do. Well, let me call you. And I went home, processed the film from 1965. And this is 2004. And they were fine. The black and white pictures of Johnny Cash backstage at Carnegie Hall. So I printed them up and put them up on the wall. Big hit because no one had ever seen them, nor had I. Had I. I'd taken them. Uh, there was an old gentleman called Mississippi John Hurt. And he'd been uh, uncovered at the age of 80. And by the time I met him, he had like six months to go. And he was this lovely gentleman, great to photograph. So I'd take pictures of him. One night, he was in the uh, green room, tuning up, ready to do a set downstairs. And he said, hey, Joe, you see, you're going to the gig? And I knew what he was talking about. And I, I said, you mean the, the Carnegie Hall was going to be on the bill with Johnny Cash, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Muddy Waters, the Carter family with uh, Johnny Cash? I, I told Mr. Mississippi John Hurt, I said, yeah, I'd love to go, but it's been sold out for months. He said, not for you, boy. And he, he gave me a, a, a ticket and on the back and said, uh, all access. It was the first time one I ever had. The music scene in England was just amazing. Everything they sent over was just incredible. You know, the Kinks and the Yardbirds and Clapton and Cream. And, uh, and so we kept waiting for those bands and those singers and people to come to New York. And I said, why don't I go to the source and bring my cameras and maybe catch some pictures of people who haven't even begun yet. And I went over, moved over there and I got a job on a, on a newspaper called New Musical Express, The Enemy. If you're in the industry or if, if, if you're a fan, you have your hands on it every Wednesday. So I got a job there. They had so much clout that they could get you in front of everyone. They do an interview with David Bowie, at, say in his office, his manager's office. As soon as it was over with, they thought, let's go with it right away. Let's stick it in the next issue. They'd call a guy like me. They'd say, we're sending over David Bowie to your studio. Uh, shoot some black and white, get some verticals, get some stuff for, for the inside, and see if you can keep it kind of fashion -y because it talks about clothes. I said, wait a minute, I'm not even awake yet. What do you mean you're sending over David Bowie? They said he's on his way. And it was before cell phones, and you couldn't stop it. And Bowie would bang on my door, and I'd have him in, and we'd have coffee, and, and uh, I'd take pictures of David Bowie. It, that's what it was like. So the point was, I wasn't getting that work because I was a terrific photographer. I was working for a really important newspaper. And so I was the... Uh, one of the few photographers on, 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 the, on the tour with the Sex Pistols. I was sent to the United States to do early Springsteen gigs in Texas when he was working like 2,000 seaters. Marley at the Lyceum. So a lot of the stuff, not too many people had those pictures. And in many cases, like Peter Gabriel in my bathtub in London, that no one has that. Uh, there's a, a film called End of the Century, I think it's called, 
and one night I'm in CBGB's and they're, they're not playing a gig that night, but they played, I photographed them playing there quite often. And they, uh, they're just hanging around. And Joey Ramone, lead singer from, comes in with his brother. And, and uh, I, I asked Joey, I said, because any pictures I was going to take would be off stage. And it was a good opportunity. There was hardly anyone there, so I had plenty of room to use CBGB's, the club. And so I said, uh, Joey, could I feel like uh, taking some pictures? I've got a motor on the camera, which we'll just rip away. And he said, sure. And we'd already had many beers together. We knew each other. And uh, just before I started shooting, I asked his brother to get out of the frame. Because I didn't need his brother in the frame. It, it, uh, and in, in the shot, you see Joey attacking me, with, pretending to attack me with a knife. Uh, he's chasing the house cat around the club. It was a house. And uh, uh, now, years later, he's dead, right? I've had the pictures published all over the place. I miss Joey. I go to see the uh, end of the century, the documentary about the Ramones. And there it is. They found Joey's brother. They have him on camera. Joey's dead, right? And he said, yeah, I could, I could tell there was something happening with, with my brother's band. Because one night, this big shot photographer from London came in. He wanted to take pictures of him. And he asked me to get out of the frame. Joey Stevens, that was the guy. And then uh, the Sex Pistols, they were doing a gig in a, a little pub in London before they became major, major and a fight ensued, and, and everyone was hammered. And I have a photograph of the band beating the hell out of the audience. That's rare. <laughs>